back to the horsepower enthusiast youtube channel we just hit a thousand subscribers i'm so excited if you're one of those subscribers i want to say thank you and if this is your first time watching one of these videos please enjoy i was so excited when we reached a thousand i just had to get down here and work on the car some more today we're going to be installing my ie billet fuel rail and then my air motor fuel pressure regulator i did have these on the car for a little bit and I was planning on keeping it on. The only reason I took it off and put the stock fuel rail and regulator back on, and then I just used hose. Because right before we went to Power Cruise last year, we were tuning it and I broke the fitting that connects the fuel rail to the fuel pressure regulator. So it was just a really quick thing. We had to put that back on in order to go to Power Cruise. And it was just whatever at the time. But now we get to install that. I got the two fittings I think I need to reattach these and let's dive into it all right the first thing i'm going to do is pull off the stock fuel rail the lines that we're not going to be using and then i have the an lines routed so we can put it into the fuel rail right here and then here's where the return goes so i'll get rid of this and then this filter i'm gonna swap the fuel rail over first before changing the fittings because the other one's stuck in there and i can't get good enough leverage on it so hopefully after I bolt it in, I'll be able to torque on it and be able to get it out. We are done with the first step. I took the fuel line out that used to go right here, that went to that hose. And then I took this one, just looped it over, and disconnected it from this hose, which is the feed. This is going to be our fuel pressure gauge, which is going to go right into the regulator. That was just on an inline, just so I could know what fuel pressure is running with the stock one. But that's all done. Next time I'm going to pull the radio off and then get the other one swapped on there. Take off the injector clips. It's going to fight me. Those are unhooked. My 10 mil. Loose. Then I'm just going to get in here with my little flathead and take off these injector clips that are behind all four of these. And then I'll just be able to pop the fuel rail off. That's what the little injector clips look like. If anyone's wondering. So I got the fuel rail off. And uh, these are the injectors I'm currently using. These are Bosch EV14 1000 cc's. I think I got them from Performance Fuel Injection on eBay. They were like 250 bucks. Great injectors, they've worked fantastic so far. But when I pulled them out of the fuel rail, all the O-rings stayed in, so I'll just to make sure to pick those off and put them back on all the injectors before I put the new rail on. All right, hopefully we can say goodbye to this fuel rail forever. But still gonna hold on to it just in case. All right, got the new fuel rail sat on there. Bolted it down a little bit. This was the fitting I was worried about, because it snapped off right there, but once I snap, or once I put it in here, it was no problem to come off. I'm going to replace it with this fitting right here. Same as the one that broke, I'm just not going to tighten it like a gorilla this time. And then right here we have the regulator. That's going to sit. It's going to screw on just like that. It's going to sit just like that in the car. Real nice. That's what it looks like all buttoned up on the fuel rail. Fuel pressure gauge. Return line. Not too bad looking. Alright, I'm pretty sure I'm all done. Got this one's in and tight, tight. 
Here's my vacuum line for the fuel pressure regulator gauges. Got this one in tight. Got my injector clips back on. Injectors are plugged in. Fuel rail is tight. So now that I'm all done with the fuel rail and all that, I'm going to start the car and see what it reads for the fuel pressure reading. I know I want to be just above 40 because that's where it was on the stock fuel pressure regulator and then it will be the same for the tune-up. Now the battery is completely 100% dead in this car. I think it's got to draw somewhere. But anyways, that's good because I'll be able to test this out. I just got a booster pack from Harbor Freight yesterday for like 45 bucks. And then this light, which is also pretty awesome, 7 hour run time is like $49. Super nice so far. So we're going to give that a test, see if it can jump start the car. Then we're going to adjust our fuel pressure regulator. And just to show you guys, I'm inside the car now the battery is completely dead. Like nothing even happens. Nothing turns on. So, we'll hook the jumper pack up and see if it'll start. Alright everyone, I got the power pack hooked up. All I have to do is turn it on and then I'm going to go start the car. Then I'll come back out here and adjust the fuel pressure. So it runs, got one of these lights, first start in probably two months I'd say, but power pack seemed good, it started the car, the battery was 100% flat, so that was good, I'm probably going to unhook the battery just so it doesn't drain it 100% again, but awesome, it was right above 41 BSI, it, the idle settles out once it gets a little bit warmer. So I'll be able to adjust it more when the time comes, but got this all swapped over and I'm super happy with how it went. All right, everybody, probably gonna end the video off there today. Hopefully you enjoyed this little install video. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I'm feeling pretty motivated since we hit a thousand subscribers and I'm pretty sure this week I'm gonna finally tear the transmission out of this car so we can get it back to a running order. Yeah, it was cool to put the fuel rail on, but we really need to get the transmission fixed. So make sure you hit the bell icon so you can follow along. Anyways, catch you in the next video. Bye.